All right, how's it going, y'all? So today we're doing a review of the Unify Wi-Fi 6 Access Point Pro in ceiling, and you can't see it, but it's just right up there. And I recently installed it in my living room, and to be honest, it has completely exceeded my expectations. It has performed far better than I would have expected, and it has just really impressed me overall with how well it works and how fast everything is able to connect to it. I was not expecting the speeds that I am able to get while also having very good performance throughout the rest of my house, even two different walls over, which is very impressive. It has been very stable overall, except for one hitch, but I'm gonna blame that on Unify, not the actual access point. And overall, it's just worked really well. And so if we just do a quick speed test right here, I'm currently a little bit away from the actual access point right now. It is just right up there, but it's within the room. I mean, it's about as close as you'd reasonably get to this access point and still be using it. And as you can see, on a 80 megahertz range, I am achieving nearly 700 megabit download. It is absolutely remarkable how fast this is, considering how I've really set it up for maximum performance across the entire house, not actual performance in just this one room. This is not me just making up a test to give really big numbers. This is real world, hey, these are good settings to use for my use case. So I've got it currently set up on the five gigahertz, 80 megahertz range, and the reason why it's able to achieve these crazy fast speeds right here is because of the four x four antennas on it and the fact that this MacBook Pro, the M1 MacBook Pro, M1 Pro MacBook Pro, they really gotta figure out this naming schema. But the reason it's able to achieve these crazy speeds is this has a three x three MIMO antenna and that access point has a four x four MIMO antenna. So what that means is this computer is able to communicate with that access point on three separate streams all at the exact same time. And because it's a four x four antenna, it could actually also have a one by one stream completely running on its own without having any performance degradation to this one's connection. That is the real thing that makes this access point actually pro is because the four x four antenna pattern just allows you to have so many concurrent devices connecting to it. And if they're on Wi-Fi six, they're able to use intelligent scheduling to not only conserve battery life, but also really reduce bottlenecks caused by people sending packets at random times. Instead, everything's scheduled, which means that the Wi-Fi access point can not only service far more clients, it can also service them much more efficiently for each client. So every single one of them will get a better connection. And so this right here is just kind of the proof that this is a really, really good access point considering how it's able to do this. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen a Wi-Fi speeds of 730 megabit per second. Now that being said, this is just speedtest.net. It does not come into account with necessarily the latency that you always get with Wi-Fi. So Wi-Fi always has a latency to it. And that's why if I go over here and do a quick Blackmagic disk speed test on an SMB share connected, Actually, that is pretty good, but it's still not the full-blown 700 megabit we were seeing. This is operating about 500 megabit, which for anybody who's ever dealt with Wi-Fi is still incredibly impressive, and I'm very satisfied with this. By the way, there's a difference between megabit and megabytes. A byte is eight bits. So that's how you can always do the conversion math. And so when I'm doing speed tests, it's going to be in megabytes per second. So just multiply these results by eight and you can get the overall throughput in megabit, which is what you use whenever you're testing network speed. That's the confusion there. But as you can see, it does have substantially less performance than you would expect out of the 700 megabit connection that we were getting, but it's still very, very impressive over an SMB share. And so this right here is kind of a taste as to what Wi-Fi 6 can really do. So there are other clients who are actively connected to that access point and they aren't doing much, but they aren't doing nothing. And so because Wi-Fi 6 has that scheduling, it's really impressive how well it works. Okay, so now if we go back in, we can kind of talk about the pricing on this thing. And it's, it's difficult to say, but it's not bad. It's currently $150 in the US, but I mean, that's actually pretty decently cheap 
compared to what you can pay with crazy Wi-Fi access points that are like $600. The crazy ones that look like some alien spaceship landed on your planet, those can get very expensive, but I'd say for $150 Wi-Fi access point, this has been very impressive and has outperformed all of my other access points. And I think it's likely because I actually have it ceiling mounted and it's a ceiling mounted access point. And so the other best Wi-Fi access point that I was always comparing stuff to previous to this was the Unify Flex HD. This is their Wi-Fi 5 access point. And it does also have the 4x4 MIMO antennas on there, which is why I liked it. And it did give me good performance, but it was not giving me nearly this kind of performance that I've been seeing out of this access point, which has been very, very, very impressive. So I think the reason why this did not give me nearly the same performance, and also the, the new Wi-Fi 6 version of this is the mesh version. They've renamed it from flex to mesh. Either way, they're pretty much the same thing. It's just, I guess these are designed where if you don't run cables to them, you can still add in a mesh network, which is why that four x four uplink is really important. But the reason this does not give as good of performance, even if it had the same antenna strength, is because this is designed to broadcast in all directions. It can be ceiling mounted, it can be wall mounted, it can be pole mounted, it can just be set on a table like this. And so it is designed to broadcast Wi-Fi energy in all directions. However, when you have a ceiling mounted access point, you are effectively cutting your broadcast area in half, and it's even more than that, because you know exactly where all the energy is gonna be broadcast to. And so you can design your Wi-Fi antenna pattern to broadcast in a much more idealized method, which means you can get such better performance out of it. It's also able to have the multiple antennas that can actually go through and denoise signals by actually collecting the data at four different points and then using an FFT, figure out exactly where that object came from and be able to do denoising algorithms to not actually be listening to anything else but that very small beam pattern that the actual signal is coming from. But with my very best day with this access point, I was getting like 300 megabit and I've essentially doubled what this Wi-Fi access point was able to do with the new access point. It is very, very impressive how much more powerful it is. And I'm not sure if it's due to Wi-Fi 6. Wi-Fi 6 does have some better scheduling algorithms and that can help. But I think more of anything, I think they've just built a better antenna and used better hardware more so than anything. Because the difference between Wi-Fi 5 to Wi-Fi 6 for single user performance should be some, but not the insane improvements that I've been seeing with this. Now, a couple of other things about the Access Point 6 Pro that I've been using. So one thing that might make it difficult for people to use, well, there's really the biggest two things is, one, you need to ceiling mount it. If you're not going to be ceiling mounted it, you do not need to be buying this. Buy the new Wi-Fi 6 Flex HD, or sorry, the Wi-Fi 6 Mesh. Buy this, the newer version of this, if you want to be putting it anywhere other than on a ceiling facing downward because you'll get better performance. If you wanna put something in wall, they've got in wall versions. Make sure to use the right tool for the job. The other thing that actually might be hurting people who just wanna do an inline upgrade of their other access points is pretty much all the Wi-Fi 6 access points Unify is selling right now is PoE Plus. And so that's because these Wi-Fi access points actually do draw a fair amount more power than usual. And so because of that, you have to have a switch that can power PoE Plus devices. And so if you have older, cheaper Unify switches or just like third party switches, there's a decent chance that they're PoE only. And that really could affect you. The other thing to note is Wi-Fi 6 is not Wi-Fi 6E. There is going to be a huge step up in performance between Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E because Wi-Fi 6E is introducing this new six gigahertz bandwidth, which is going to be a huge step up. Think the difference between 2.4 gigahertz to five gigahertz connections. That is going to be the difference between six and 6E for devices that one, have 6E compatibility, and two, are close enough to the actual access point to be able to still get a good signal because the six gigahertz range is just going to be slowed down by walls and everything like that, just like how five gigahertz is, except even stronger. And so that's the one thing about Wi-Fi 6E, but for devices that do have it, it is going to be a huge step up. Now we're not gonna see those consumer devices on the market for a while, but when they do, it probably will be worth upgrading your access points to that, especially if you're on Wi-Fi 5 access points. 
but overall I've been very impressed by these and I'm very happy with them. So there are three Unify Wi-Fi 6 access points that are in ceiling. You've got the light, the long range, and the pro. So both the long range and the pro have four x four MIMO antennas. And I think your best bet for most people is going to actually be to go for the six pro if you want to upgrade over the Wi-Fi six light. Now I've not had a chance to test the Wi-Fi six light, but I do think the four x four antenna patterns for people who have either a lot of devices connected to their network or devices that actually have like three x three antennas and want to get the maximum possible Wi-Fi speed. I do think the six pro is a considerable upgrade. It's just got much higher theoretical performance. Now, obviously this 5.3 gigahertz aggregation number is not going to happen. There's no way you're getting anywhere close to that because one, it's got a one gigabit connection on the end. And two, that's just not what Wi-Fi allows you to do. Manufacturers always show these big old numbers that are just not real. When you buy a gigabit switch, you know, if you hook up a device to it, it's going to get gigabit speeds maybe 99% gigabit speeds, but it's gonna get gigabit speeds. There is no way you're getting anywhere close to that. 700 megabit is what I would say you should expect in all the right conditions. And maybe if you have a lot of devices, maybe you can get up to saturating that one gigabit connection, maybe. But how many people actually have enough devices spread out across all these different spectrums? Because to get those speeds, you also need 2.4 gigahertz devices. Nobody has the many devices who are all doing the same thing at the same time to really warrant having over a one gigabit connection on the device. Now I would love to see it because I'd love to see big numbers, but reasonably I am currently not limited by the one gigabit connection on this device. And I think that maybe if I set up a speed test where I had like three devices all right here, right next to me, all downloading at the exact same time, maybe I could see that saturation but it would just be something that would be like a lab test. It would not be real world test. I don't think anybody's going to get near one gigabit being a limit on these devices for a while. Now the Wi-Fi 6E access point, which is going to be the enterprise one that Unify is coming out with, because of that six gigahertz range coming from Wi-Fi 6E, you actually probably will be able to have the one gigabit connection that you would see on this be a limitation. And that's why that device actually comes with a 2.5 gigabit connection on it. So I'm really excited to see that. All right, and so now for people who are just interested in as to how I got those speeds, we can go over and I'll just show my quick setup for this. And it's really nothing special. I'm on an 80 megahertz spectrum, which for Wi-Fi 6 is appropriate, especially how performant this device is and how I don't need it to have insane range. So the 80 megahertz spectrum does allow me to achieve those fast speeds. And I'm only using medium transmit power. My channel is 157, which is not DFS, which is important for me because I kind of live close to an airport. And I also live in a populated area, so you never know when a weather radar is gonna go over you. And so with these settings, I was able to achieve a pretty stable 700 megabit maximum throughput, which I think is very impressive. And so there's no magic behind the scenes here. There's no just cranking up numbers to get just great data. I live in a regular neighborhood that's a cookie cutter that's got a lot of houses next to me. It's five gigahertz, so it's not like there's that much Wi-Fi seeping into my walls, but I am able to go through and I'm getting great performance out of this thing. Now, I did say at the beginning of this video, when I first installed it, I had some issues. And once again, I gotta blame Unify for this because Unify fixed it in an update. So for a while, for some reason, I have no idea why, my Apple TV in my bedroom, which is just right there, decided it did not want to connect to this access point. It would connect to any other access point other than this one. I have no idea why. I tried everything. It had great signal. It was always connecting to my office Wi-Fi, which is all the way over there, even though it had much worse performance. I think what was happening is Unify had an issue where they accidentally started calling things release candidates. And the way that the update console was checking for what update train you were using. So you know how you can have update train for just release versions or you want beta versions or you want alpha versions. Well, the way that worked with Unify is they were actually looking for the word release in the title. And so when they set up release candidates, which are not release versions, the release candidates, it was finding them and saying, Hey, this is a release version and showing it to us. And so me being me, I was like, okay, let's just go ahead. I'm gonna update everything to the most recent software. 
since I just got this new access point, didn't want any issues, wanted to be on the most recent software for all these videos. And then I found out, oh great, that is a release candidate, not a release version. So then a few days later after I was spinning, tearing my hair out trying to figure out what was going on, there was an update for it and all of a sudden now it works. Apple TV is happy, gets great signal now. I have no idea what happened there, but that is just a Unify-ism. Anybody who owns a Unify product probably has experienced this at one point. Unify likes to send out updates a lot more than they like to send out testing. I hate to say it, but I've had a lot of issues throughout the years and it generally makes me very wary whenever I'm going through and updating my stuff. I very rarely update my Unify things. There's no way I would ever set up auto install for any updates for a Unify system just because of how often they, they have messed up things. They, they push out an update and they're kind of treating their community as beta testing which for me is really not that big of a deal because I kind of like that. I, I'm one of the people who's kind of on the bleeding edge of stuff, right? And that's my job is to go through and test out features and get to know them before they come to the general masses. The problem is they're doing this for everybody who just thinks, oh, most recent update, install. And you never know what will happen. So that, that's my biggest gripe with Unify is you don't know if you're gonna be shipped a, a buggy build or anything like that. And you kind of just have to hope for the best whenever you're installing new software for them. But overall, I think this Unify Wi-Fi 6 access point is probably one of the best things I've tested and got me just unbelievable Wi-Fi and with way more performance than I ever really expected to get out of the Wi-Fi access point. I think that this is a great setup for people who have needs of really good performance and want to spend the money. I don't think you will have a bad experience with it as long as you don't go through and adhere to bad Wi-Fi practices. So that's basically don't overload your Wi-Fi network and don't just crank up the gain on all of your access points if you want them to roam well. All right, well, that's going to be it for this overview. Go and leave any of the tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below and have a good one. Bye.